Okay, hey travelers, Chris here with another review. Um, you might hear that I'm a little bit sick, apologies for that. Uh, we are in Nikko, a prefecture of Japan, and today we're looking at the Fairfield by Marriott in Tochigi Nikko. And before I take you into the hotel and show you a bit of what you can see here, um, let me tell you why you would come to Nikko and what are the things that you can do around here. So, let's go. So actually the first thing we did was to go to the Nikko Toshugu Shrine that you can see here. Those are multiple temple buildings and the very extensive garden landscape that is actually part of the world heritage. And this is actually quite close to the hotel so it's just a quick drive over from the hotel to this temple and we really loved it here. It was also quite busy around New Year's as a lot of people come to pay their respects. And as you can see here, you can also get basically a little reading of your future for the upcoming year. If you get bad news, you can then actually tie it up and put it on to here. So you will not have this bad news for the rest of the day. Furthermore, they also had a couple of food stands around the temple, which was nice. Afterwards, we actually drove to Lake Chusenji. This one is a mountain lake, as you can see here, it's actually quite big and it's enclosed by a couple of mountains around 1200 meters up and you actually have a lot of waterfalls in the area. So one of the waterfalls you can see here is called Kegon Falls. This is supposed to be one of the three very beautiful um, waterfalls around the area. And I believe that it's even nicer if you come in fall when all the leaves have changed the colors to, to various shades of red and green. This one is another one, the Ryusu Falls, also around the lake. And what's nice about this one is that you can actually relax in a cafe nearby and get this beautiful view from the comfort of a heated place, which was much needed in winter. Besides that, there's a lot of good food in Nikko. We went to a place called Kurahachi Ramen to get some proper and authentic gyoza and nice and hot bowl of ramen to give us some strength to look at further uh, places around the area. So after that, another thing you might want to have a look at is the Kirifuri waterfall. Again, in winter it does not look as nice even though I have to say seeing these mountains in the back is absolutely beautiful. And you can see that in this shot there's just so much of, of variety in the landscape and in the topography and this is absolutely stunning. Really beautiful. And also here you can see the waterfall uh, from a different angle. And it's just fun to actually explore these locations even though I have to say you should have a car with you because it's a bit of a pain to actually go by train or bus. One of the last items we did was this suspension bridge that was also quite cool. There's a little temple on the other side of the bridge and it spans across this quite big kind of valley here as you can see. It's very lovely and you can see that the locals are putting these coins on the branches of the trees for good luck and also have this little shrine to commemorate this. All right, so here we are. After showing you a little bit of the things that you can see and do in Nikko, uh, let's have a look at the hotel. And as always, we start with the room. This is a two-star hotel, and thus there's not that much to be said about the hotel and also the room, but let me go through it a little bit. First thing is we are here in winter, and be it winter or summer, it's important that the AC is working well. So um, this one is really working well. And if you can see it here in general, this room, you can really see the wooden and, and black metal tones that are basically throughout the entire hotel. You can see it in the elevators and the entry area and also in this room here. So I think that's super beautiful, makes it very comfy. Uh, big thumbs up for the design here. You can see there's not that much in this room. You have this open uh, sink and bath bathing area, like a, a bathroom area. You have a big queen or king size bed, looks like king size. And what I really like, and they really thought this through, is that you have actually USB plugs, you have power plugs, multiple ones on both sides of the bed, you have it to the right here. 
So that's really cool. They really thought it through. On top of that, also you can, you can see that the lamps are giving it this really warm light. So this is really a cozy room, I love it. Um, besides that though, and you can see that our stuff is lying around here actually, um, there's actually not a lot of storage. So you don't have a traditional kind of you know, place to hang your, I mean you can hang your jackets in the entry area, but there's no place for the luggage and if you want to you know, spread out a little bit, it's a bit difficult. But you have this really long bench here and a table with it. So at least you can relax here and look outside. Um, it's already evening as of this filming, so let me play over what our view looks like. But you can really see uh, the mountains, it's amazing. But at the same time, there's another building right on the other side. So it's a bit of a, you know, a bit of good and bad in the view. You also get um, pretty much just a little uh, uh, mini fridge. Basically, it's empty, so it's, it's for you to, to fill uh, lots of tea, a kettle, you get water every day. Uh, pretty much the basics. Besides that, of course, a big TV. Uh, always necessary, although for some reason they actually decided to disable the Netflix settings. I don't know why, but you cannot use Netflix on this TV, even though it has the button for it, so a bit strange. You can see here, basically, we have the one suitcase on this little uh, stand and you can put your coats here. This is really good, I think. They know their audience. A lot of people come here for hiking. So if you can actually hang your jackets and coats in different layers there, that's awesome. And then, yeah, just the bathroom as a, as a remainder. The shower is nice. It's quite small, as you can see. You don't have a bathtub here, but the shower works well. The water pressure, temperature, everything is well. And you also have um, refillable shower gel and shampoos. I always love that. It's better for the environment. But I also have to say that it's not of the highest quality. Um, I don't know this brand specifically, but at least my girlfriend tells me that it's not the best shampoo. Uh, so if that's important, you know, bring your own. And then of course you have your classic um, Japanese toilet. And again, you can see that the wooden and black metal kind of, uh, uh, you know, this theme is also even in the bathroom. And of course this um, toilet has all the, you know, functions that you like from Japanese toilets. Besides that, that's pretty much it on this hotel room. I like small details that they really thought out well. I like that they give you two toothbrushes that are of different colors, so you know which one is yours. You know, it's the little things that that's really good. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the room. Let me show you now the, the rest of the hotel. Just mind you, there's no breakfast um, or any kind of other amenities. So uh, let me talk you through what else there is to do here. So first of all, here's the outside shot again. and Look at the mountains in the back. It's really, really beautiful. But you can also see that the hotel itself is quite small, around 90 rooms and a big parking lot in front. This is the lobby and I really like the kind of wooden tones that they uh, have throughout the entire hotel and gives this really warm and cozy feeling, which at least really speaks to me. There's overall not much to be said in terms of facility, as mentioned, no breakfast. Um, pretty much nothing except, as you can see back here, there's actually a little coffee machine. You get tea, I think miso soup if I'm not mistaken. And there's also an oven that you can use for either self-brought snacks, but also for the snack area. So there's no room service in that sense, but you can see it here. There's a snack area where you can purchase different items including alcoholics you can also order or buy an entire pizza for example but keep in mind that this is something that you will then have to put into the oven so uh, definitely a bit of a different experience so even more important to have a car but I have nothing but good things to say about the staff they were incredibly friendly and helpful and pretty much um, that's, that's it, those are the, the basics. This hotel is, is pretty much down to just having a really nice, comfy, super clean room and the rest you basically have to figure out yourself. So, mentioning it again, come by car and enjoy this hotel. All right, one more thing I wanted to talk about with the room is that 
There are no different room types. Basically, you can just get a king bed or a twin bed, but there's no different room sizes or anything. And one thing I noticed is that in terms of privacy, you better come with someone you really know well, because uh, for once you see that the shower actually has a window, so uh, there's not that much privacy and also you can actually not lock the restroom. So something to keep in mind, there is one way to get a bit of privacy. So you can actually use these sliding doors to basically create a bit of, you know, a sense of, of privacy, but uh, it's definitely a bit more intimate of an experience. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, with that in mind, who is this hotel for? Who should stay here? We paid around $200 per night, which is quite a lot, especially for a two-star hotel. Um, now, to be fair, it's peak time right now. It's, this is around New Year's. Uh, other peak times probably in fall. So usually the price hovers around $120, $150 per night. This is still a lot for a two-star hotel. I still think this is worth it to come here if A, you want a very modern, very clean hotel experience. You know what you're getting with this brand and with a, a Marriott Bonvoy chain. So at least you won't have any surprises that you might have if you go with a kind of a no-name Japanese one. Um, the fact that there's no breakfast, however, is a bit annoying and I would suggest that you come here by car so you can actually drive somewhere and buy some breakfast. Otherwise, it will not be so fun for you. But that's pretty much your options for Marriott Bonvoy in the area. There's not a lot of brand hotels. We saw that there's also Ritz-Carlton around Nico, but the price was almost $2,000 per night. So that's totally a different, different um, category, of course. So I think this is fantastic as kind of a little uh, base quarter to actually venture out and to uh, explore Nico. So overall, I'm happy that we came here. Again, the price seems high for a two-star hotel. Keep in mind, this is Japan. Hotels are usually a bit pricier. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. We are ready to leave. If you have any questions about this hotel, feel free to write it down in the comments and I'll see you in the next review. Cheers.